Good evening, Oasis Christian Center. It's so good to see those in the sanctuary tonight, and that music sounded so wonderful. I heard it on the way over here. <laughs> I was coming in in two wheels again, but it's a good day to rejoice and be in the Lord, and it's a good day to be in His house. So let's go ahead and welcome in the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you, Father God, that we do have pastors that understand the importance of gathering together and opening up the house, Father, on a Wednesday night. We thank you. We thank you for their teachings that they're going to bring forth tonight, Father God. We thank you for the lessons that we're learning. We thank you for the improvements we're making. And, Father God, we thank you for the healing and restoration that you're bringing. Holy Spirit, we ask that as we yield to you, that you just steady our hearts and steady our minds and bring peace to those questions and, and concerns that we have. And just let us get still before the Father, receiving the good word tonight, knowing that it is transforming us, it is changing us. And Father God, we thank you for those who are joining us by Facebook tonight. We thank you, Father God, that your word goes out, your spirit goes out, and you join us all together. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you that healing is going out from this place. We thank you, Father God, that financial prosperity is going out from this place. We thank you, Father God, that chains are broken, addictions are broken, Father God. We thank you that our families are growing stronger instead of further apart. We thank you, Father God, for the restoration that you're bringing. And Father, now we ask, through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ, we plead the blood over this service. We find everything that would try to come against any of the word, the audio, or the video, or any other means by people getting here, Father God, they get here safely. And we thank you for that, Father God. Angels take charge of this service and guarding over us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. Um, this morning I woke up... Um, to something on Facebook and I just thought that it might be something good to share because you know we all we're all going through something and if you're not then you need to check your pulse because you know there's enough reasons you know for us to go through something and I'm not meaning all the time bad things I'm just talking about maybe concerns prayers for others you know or maybe things that we're trying to overcome maybe addictions we're trying to break and this morning when I got up, there uh, is a Christian comedian that I follow. Her name is Shonda Pierce. She's amazing. She is the top uh, comedian in the world. I mean, she just, her concerts are sold out. And she prim primarily goes to churches because she is a Christian and she does bring the message of salvation. But she does it through comedy. And she also brings it through her pain. And she's written a new book. And it talks about the struggles that she goes through and that she's went through and how God brought her through. And today she posted something on her page, and it was about a gospel singer. I'm not certain if any one of you know him, but I, I'm sure when I say the name, you'll know. And his name is Russ Taft. Well, he has come forward in the last few days um, on some things that he has went through in his life. In other words, Jesus has broken chains off of the things that he has hidden, the things that are coming against him, came across his family, the things that people said, you're not good enough, you're never going to make it. You know, you've done this wrong, that wrong, you're not a good person, how dare you stand up in front of people and give the, you know, sing your heart out and win these Grammys when you're this, this, and this. And how many times have we been faced with that in our life? How many times have we thought we couldn't do something because someone else has told us we couldn't? Well, anyway, I listened to this video, and it is a long video. It's about probably an hour and 15 minutes, but it's his testimony. You guys, it will bring you to tears because it helps you to, to realize that everybody is vulnerable that we all have things that we're working through, that we all grow tired, that we all grow weary in doing good, and that we all have had something that has tried to take root deep in us and cause us from our purpose. And also things that have come as we trust God, we love God, but then on the other side, we're totally against God. 
And those two things can't come together, so we put on a mask. And he breaks through that mask, and it is so powerful, and he gives glory to God. But I will tell you, there's some language in there. There's some language, because he's raw, and he just lets you know the pain, and you really feel it. You really do feel it. And I just, as, as I was listening to that this morning, I go, and I happen to turn it to tomorrow's devotion instead of today, and it was from Joyce Meyer. And it comes from John's. John 15 and 5, and the scripture reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much fruit. Apart from me, that means cut off from my vital union, you can do nothing. And Joyce Meyer says, self-improvement improvement does not come through self-effort. It comes from dependence upon God and from faith in Him. He allows us to make efforts, but it must be an effort while depending totally on Him. Because apart from Him, we can do nothing. And that testimony that Russ Taft gave, and even Chandra Pierce, on the pain of growing up and the things that they went to. And Russ Taft's father was a minister, okay? So there's a lot of religious practices that went on in his life. But they did not bring him conviction. They brought him condemnation. So he tried to put on the face that he thought people should see and tried to hide. But he loved God and he would come back to God but then he'd think, well, I can do it on my own. And he took advantage of several different, you know, ministries and different groups that help people. People, there's nothing wrong with getting help. We need help. We need help. But it, he just went to show that it was through the breaking of Jesus Christ, letting Jesus really break through that and making that effort that has healed him. And that is just so awesome because his music, he's contemporary Christian music, and his music um, is just really was awesome, even in, in my walk with God on many, many years ago. So anyway, I know that took a little longer than it did, but um, I hope that um, with pastors, what they're bringing tonight, they're bringing, um, now tell me again, pastors, because I saw it, <laughs> practice, practice. Okay, well, we're going to practice courtesy, so I know that you want to keep your ears open and stay tuned. But right now, let's just thank the Lord. Let's go to Him and praise and worship. So if you would stand and join us. Praise the Lord. Can we all give the Lord a, a good praise the Lord? Come on, let's all say praise the Lord. Because uh, that's who we want here with us, Amen. <laughs> we don't no point to come if, if he's not here. Amen. Glory. I mean, we have camaraderie with everybody, but still, he's the focus, Amen. Amen. So he makes us free.
we got to do. We got to speak the word. Amen? Amen. We're going to go old school on you. Hadn't done this in a long time. So I just want y'all to, to watch the words. And uh, not those. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Had the other song still up there. And just, um, let's just, let's just shoot, give it a shot at this. God's with us. Amen. <laughs>
We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. I felt that when you walked into the room that God would do something for you. Hallelujah. Give the Lord another shout. You might be seated. Good evening, Oasis Christian Center. If I can keep my shoes on. <laughs> well, we just want to welcome everyone in tonight. We hope everyone gets a blessing tonight. And um, we just want to welcome in you out there on Facebook and YouTube. Whichever way you're listening, we thank you for it. And now I'm going to pray over the ties and all. Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for all that you do for each and every one of us, Father God. Thank you for letting us arrive safely here to your house tonight, Father God. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person as they go back home, Father God, that they arrive safely. Father God, I just thank you for all that you do for me and everyone else, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So my scripture is on Galatians 6, 7 through 10. Giving tithes and offerings with hope for how God will use it is saving to the Spirit. And this hopeful giving empowers the church to, to collectively sow to the Spirit as it does good. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first. So I'm going to speak over the ways to give. As I tithe and give offerings, As I, tithe and give offerings I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. Jobs and better jobs. Jobs and better jobs. Graces and bonuses. Graces and bonuses. Benefits. 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 Sales and commissions. Sales, Sales and commissions. Favorable settlement. Favorable settlement. Estates, Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Interest and income. Interest and income. Rebates and returns. Rebates and returns. Discounts and dividends. Discounts and dividends. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decreased. Bills decreased. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have. That I may now have more than enough. More than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now I will give you the ways that you can give your tithes and all. You can go to www.paypal.me slash Oasis Family Church. You can text to give to 334-274-7885. You can also use the donate button at www.oasisfamilychurch.net. Or you can use the cash out and enter the dollar sign Oasis Family Church. And you can mail your donations to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. And now we will call our pastors up for the good word tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this service. And Father, we just thank you that we all make a drawing on your anointing this night. I thank you that answers will come in your presence as we make that drawing. But we're drawing from what you're going to speak to us. You're, we're drawing of what you want to tell us, Father God, the truth that you want to put inside of our spirit this night. We're making a drawing on your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ask you, if you will to get your Bibles and go to Titus. 
chapter 3. I bet y'all haven't been in Titus lately. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the title tonight is, is Practice Being Courteous. And this is in the Titus 3 and 2. This is in the Passion Translation. And remind them to never tear down anyone with their words or quarrel, but instead be considerate, humble, and courteous to everyone. Now, the definition of being courteous is the showing of politeness in one's attitude and behavior toward others. I'm going to give it to you in a bunch of different translations. Uh, to speak evil of no one, to malign no one, uh, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. Um, it amplified says showing unqualified consideration and courtesy toward everyone. I don't know if I've arrived. As a matter of fact, let's let's just say I, I have not arrived have at, at perfect courtesy. That word just wow. I mean, mm, that's gonna take some doing to get there. Amen. Amen. Um, we strive to be courteous as we should, but we're gonna need the grace of God because sometimes we're not as courteous as we should be. All of us. Um, I was listening to this pastor online on YouTube, and. Um, he was saying, you know, in all churches, all groups, all jobs, there are some difficult people. Okay, now, you might want to look at your neighbor right now, or you might want to just look around the room. And, you know, everybody knows. <laughs> okay. And he, he said this phrase, and I've never heard this before. He said, they're EGR people. And I was like, EGR people? I've heard of, you know, fruit slates and nuts, granola Christians, but what is EGR people? And it means extra grace required people. In other words, they're very difficult. Thank you very much. He said, the EGR people will need more courtesy than others. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're learning to be considerate to inconsiderate people. We're learning that um, there's some people that are not going to be agreeable about anything, yet we're still supposed to be considerate to those people. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm going to read you a portion of James 3 and verse number 18. This is in the message. I really like this. I, we're not going to read the whole thing. It's just this last portion. Do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. That's courtesy, isn't it? Okay, now I'm going to give you something to, to chew on. Do you want your marriage to improve? Then practice being courteous to your spouse. Say please. Say thank you. Say you're welcome. It's the little things like that that make a huge difference in your marriage. Tell your spouse you appreciate the things that they do. If we put this into practice by being courteous, watch what happens in your marriage. Watch what happens in your friendship. Watch what happens on your job. Just being courteous. Now I'm going to read you a portion of Romans 14. 19 through 21, but it's just two little portions. I'm going to skip a lot, uh, skip around. This is the Message Bible. So let's agree to use all of our energy in getting along with each other. Help others with encouraging words. Don't drag them down by finding fault. And I'm going to skip on down. So be sensitive and courteous to the others. This is speaking about eating. Uh, don't eat or say or do things that might interfere. And here's the part that I really wanted to get to in this scripture. Don't eat or say or do things that might interfere with the free exchange of love. Don't we a lot of times judge each other and are discourteous to each other about, you know, I don't know how many times I've been corrected on the things that I eat <laughs> by good Christians. I mean, we, I, I don't know how many times I've corrected other people about the things they eat. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It's getting real <laughs> quiet. I can tell that that holy hush will be in here tonight. Um, so... To be courteous, we're going to have to be patient. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.14, just a little slither of it, the last part of it, in the Passion. Be quick to demonstrate patience with everyone. That's what being courteous is. When you're waiting in a long line and, and somebody is doing a price check on something, and we're going to have to put our flesh under, we're going to have to let the Holy Spirit do the work and be patient and courteous rather than saying something negative or bad about the situation. Um, maybe somebody is just learning how to do something and we're, you know, our flesh wants to rise up and be discourteous and say they need to put somebody on this 
register that knows what they're doing or that is trained our flesh. That's every one of us. Our flesh wants to rise up. But the Holy Spirit is, is trying to say, no, no, I'm training you to be courteous in all situations. And to tell you the truth, the Holy Spirit will walk us right into situations where it's hard to be courteous sometimes on our flesh. He's doing that to put make us into the image of Jesus Christ. So he's not making us into easy situations all the time. He's leading us into situations that are going to be, they're going to try us. Thank you very much. Amen. Courteous people let people know that we appreciate their help. It is important to say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. It is important to say thank you. Amen. It is important to say thank you. You're acknowledging and we're acknowledging that we received something. Say thank you for the gift. Say thank you to your server. Say thank you to the person helping. Um, sometimes we have practiced this, and sometimes we failed at this miserably. But sometimes we practiced it and, and done a pretty decent job because sometimes there was a server that wasn't up to par. Maybe they had seven tables, and we don't know what they've got. And, you know, we're frustrated because maybe our food is not, you know, prepared the way we wanted it, the order wasn't right, or whatever. But sometimes we've just experimented with finding some little something that we could be considerate to them about and complimenting them on that one thing. And you'll be surprised what happens when you do that. Light comes in people's eyes. Strength comes in those people. I I'm telling you, it changes. I don't know about you guys, but it changes me. When I get somebody that, that I'm dealing with is very courteous, it's like, oh my God, that's, that's a breath of fresh air. That is so refreshing. So say thank you to your server. Say thank you to the person helping you on the phone. Sometimes that's hard. <laughs> Ask pastor, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Say thank you to your spouse. Say thank you to the person in the drive through mm -hmm. Now, this man, I, I, I didn't write his name down. Um, I don't re recall it at this, this minute. He wrote a book a few years ago, and it was about 365 thank yous. And he felt like that he was led to, to send out thank you notes. And he, he started acknowledging people that he had acknowledged and been acknowledging like gifts that he, Christmas gifts and stuff. He said one of the first thing he did was acknowledge a Christmas gift that he got from his son. And he said he acknowledged that gift and he wrote him a very heartfelt. Now that's the thing about it. This can't be just something that you're doing, so thank you. Thank you for what? Do something from your heart. Say something from your heart. That's what this is about. If you do it from your heart, it makes a huge difference in somebody. And that's the way the Holy Spirit is leading us to do it. We don't like to be verbal like that. Or I know I just butchered that word. But we don't like to, we, you know, we, we say, no, nah, I'm just not going to do it that way. I just not. But that's wrong. That's not letting the Holy Spirit lead us correctly and being sensitive. Anyway, he, he wrote this note to his son and thanked him for the real well thought of gift and was saying some things to him just personally building him up you know that's the thing about when we're doing this we're not tearing people down at the same time we're building them up have you ever heard somebody give a compliment and at the same time they have shredded you to pieces with the compliment they, they gave you well you did a good job on that and it's about time I can't believe you finally got around to doing this oh <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful compliment. It is so encouraging. You're, you're getting it. I love it. Okay. We all need it. Okay. Anyway, it made a huge difference. Him and his son were not close, and they became very close. And um, he was practicing being courteous by writing out thank you notes. And he, he was noticing things in people that he never noticed before, people that were helping him. Um, I mean, just little things. He started noticing them because once you start doing something like that, your eyes are open to it and you start seeing it. It's, it's like if you go buy a, a, a blue car. You start seeing blue cars all over the place. You start recognizing those blue cars all over the place. You can see them when you never saw them before. It's just like that when we're recognizing being courteous and thankful. It does something in us and we start seeing more things to be courteous and thankful for. Can, can you see what I'm talking about? Anyway, he practiced that for a little over a year. He wrote um, almost 400 
uh, thank you notes, and he's still doing it today. He said it changed his life. And he, in his book, he told about, I read this book years ago, and I reread a lot of it uh, this week. But he, he told how dire his circumstances were. But as he's doing that, it's changing him on the inside. It's helping him. And it's changing mm, in, in, at the end of the time of him doing this, just for the book's purpose, um, his circumstances were completely different. I mean, God had just done a reversal for him. And at the time this started out, I don't believe he was a Christian. Uh, maybe he was. I'm, I just I, He didn't say it. I'm not sure. But as he put it into practice, he got the revelation of it, and it changed his life. Titus 3 and 2, again, just a portion. Message Bible. God's people should be big-hearted and courteous. So how do you show courtesy? How do we do it to others? Be kind. Be polite. Avoid interrupting. Listen to others. Respect the differences of opinions and the differences of beliefs. I don't have to argue with you because you believe different than me. Matter of fact, it's, it's, a, it's an automatic uh, exposure of pride in me when I want to argue with you because you believe different than me. You did something differently than I would do. That is a, a automatic. You're, it's pride trying to exalt itself. That's what it is. Because we've got to be right. I'm telling you, that is so far opposed to what God wants us to do. Thank you very much. Amen. We need to think before we speak. That's another Jeopardy moment. Think before you speak. I told y'all before, sometimes my pause button is messed up. And I don't pause. And I, I don't think before I speak. And it's really got me in. Mm. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 in the message. Be courteous and considerate in everything. So we're going to have to humble ourselves to be courteous. Courteous, courteous, courteous people. We just said it respect the differences of others. Courteous people are considerate of other people's feelings. How are they going to feel if I say this? It might be the truth, but how are they going to feel? How is it going to affect them if I say this? You know, there's things to, there's times to say stuff. And I'll tell you the truth is a lot of times don't ever say stuff. Oh, that was good. That was another Jeopardy moment. Courtesy? Courtesy? <laughs> Courtesy. No. Courteous. Hallelujah. Maybe I'll have this by the end of the sermon. Courteous people are patient with other people. Even people that irritate them. Here are things that's courteous. As a matter of fact, I'm, I think I'm just pointing the edge and having to say this word. <laughs> things that courteous people say. Please. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. I said it wrong. That was when I had to You understand? That was sarcastic. When I had to do that. You know, sarcasm has no place in being courteous. You understand that? And we do that a lot of times. We say, I wasn't being sarcastic. You lied, dog. He was too. You're welcome. Excuse me. I'm sorry. May I help you? Pardon me. I apologize. Now, if I said, if we just did a little thing, and I said, okay, of all the fast food restaurants that you know about, is there one that stands out to you where their employees are more courteous than the other fast food restaurants? I believe, in my mind, it's an absolute yes. It's, a, it's like 100 to maybe 40 on the differences there. And to me, in my mind, it's my, my own opinion, but it's Chick-fil-A. Amen. Okay. Um, most fast food places, it's like, you got your food, pull off, dude. I don't care if it took two hours to get your food. Go. I'm on my phone, can't you see? Never mind. But Chick-fil-A employees go through training to teach them a higher standard of being courteous. I looked online today and I found out that if you wanted to be in an executive at Chick-fil-A, you had to be accepted to their boot camp to be an executive in the higher echelon of, of Chick-fil-A. And you have to be accepted by them. And it's a six-month training program boot camp. Six months. They're really wanting to transform thinking. You understand? I like it. But just the training program for their regular employees that we see every day, we know it's better. They're, they're doing great. But they have four core values. 
And these four core values are create eye contact, share a smile, speak with a friendly tone, and always say, always, every single time, say, my pleasure. Yes. My pleasure. You, you compliment them on something, they'll say, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, their core values consist of common courtesy. As God's children, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to train us to be more courteous and considerate of others. If we yield to Him, He will help us. Now, i got two more scriptures, and I'm, I'm calling Noah. Got three. And I'm calling Pastor Sharon. 1 Peter 2 and 17, this is in the Passion. Recognize the value of every person. Even the people that can't add anything to your life, that can't do anything for you, recognize the value of every person and continually show love to every believer. Live your lives with greater reverence and in holy awe of God. Honor your rulers. So how do we do this? By being courteous. <clears throat> Proverbs 16 and 24 in the Passion. Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful, life-giving words, for they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirits. One more scripture, and this is just a portion. This is 1 Peter 3, starting with verse number 8. This is in the message, so you don't know how far I'm going down. Um, but it, it's just a little ways. Summing up, be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. And here's, here's the next. That goes for all of you. No exceptions. No exceptions. That goes for everybody. I like that. No retaliation. No sharp-tongued sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. You'll be a blessing, and you'll also get a blessing. Praise God. God. That was excellent, Pastor. So, so good. Practicing being courteous. Pastor was talking about the restaurants, and it made me think about a restaurant we went to uh, just a, a little bit ago. Um, and at this particular restaurant, they had they were very courteous. But um, Debbie went with us this particular day, <laughs> and uh, anyway, the waiter was super, super great. He was an awesome waiter. But um, he came and you know was getting an order and everything, and he. I got to Debbie. I think she might have been first. Her order was completely crazy. <laughs> Do you feel like I'm being courteous, Debbie? I don't even remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> she changed the whole menu, and she put her own prices on it. <laughs> so I thought that was a good try, but, you know, it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, then pastors, his was kind of crazy. Not quite as crazy as Debbie's. And then... He got to my order, and mine was perfect, of course, you know. <laughs> I didn't do anything crazy, so. <laughs> Pastors always tease me about that. But anyway, we had a great lunch, and the waiter was super, super nice and everything. But then we got through, we're ready to go. <laughs> so the waiter comes to ask us if we want anything else. I said, I want a, a cup of ice water to go. And he's like, you are so needy. <laughs> I, have not, I have not asked for anything crazy the whole day. <laughs> the whole time. He was just kidding, though. He was, he was just kidding with me. It took me a minute to realize that. I was like, I was like you know, who are you talking to? <laughs> Praise God. God is good. You know, laughter doing good, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. But he was an excellent waiter. I, I have to throw that in. He was excellent. And he's waited on us several times. But he was just joking with me, and that's okay. Amen. Amen. He felt comfortable to do that. So I'm going to begin in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 in the Passion Translation. And this is why I, I felt like I wanted to read these scriptures first. But you need to be aware... So we need to be aware of something. Amen? It says you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. People will be self-centered, lovers of themselves, and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. 
They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. Slaves to their desires, they will, ferocious, they will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in, cl in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of loving God. And verse 5, they may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality they want nothing to do with God's power. Stay away from people like these. So, you know, the Lord said, you know, for us to be aware of these things. And, you know, we see it more and more, don't we? That society is going to, to a, a different place than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. You know, it's getting harder. People are getting harder. And so the Lord tells us to be aware of that. And uh, so, you know, with uh, people, the way that people are treating people these days, talk the way they're talking to people these days, you know, as Christians, we need to make a conscious effort to uh, conform to the culture of the Word of God. That's right. Not conform to the culture of this age. Uh -huh. Amen. The con conduct ourselves, or conduct our actions and our speech according to the Word of God. Uh -huh. Not according to the world, but according to the Word of God. Amen. We don't want to just, uh, you know, uh, do as they do. Talk as they talk. You know, we are in the kingdom of God. You know, we are to be separated from the world. And that's what the, the Lord is talking about, being separated from the world. Because we don't, um, we don't join in with, with hate. We don't join in with being uh, rude or ruthless or, you know, all these things that it says is, is coming on the earth and things we're already seeing. But the scripture says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. You know, we've all been there. I've done it. I've lost it. I've said the wrong things. I've had the wrong attitude. Amen. I've acted uh, the wrong way before it, as all, all of us have. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But we are striving. Amen. <laughs> we are striving. We're practicing. Praise God. You know, we are... Uh, a work in progress. We have not arrived, and we'll all be. We'll always be striving. We'll That's always right. be trying, you know, trying to get to that better place. Right. You know, as a Christian. But you know, these days have. Uh, we have to work on it. Let me just say that in these days, the way things are, we have to work on it. That's right. And it's uh, just about a daily thing when you're out in public or yeah. dealing with the public have to practice this on a regular basis. And, you know, we see um, more and more because it's uh, few and far between that we actually run into a courteous person. Sad to say, I don't know about y'all, but I see that, you know. And when you run into a courteous person, Pastor's talking about Chick-fil-A, when you run into that, you take notice of it. You're like, wow, what, that was a pleasant uh in, encounter right there. That was a pleasant situation. And uh, so, you know, we recognize those things, and you know, people will recognize it in us. You know, if we're courteous to them, they're going to recognize that. Whether they really uh, realize what's going on, it's going to speak to them. It's going to show them something. There's something about that person that's different than the rest. You know, so. Um, being courteous is a, a regular thing that we need to work on. You know, don't blend in and don't be influenced by the world. Be influenced by the Word of God. Yes. Praise God. So, you know, we need to remember that everybody, and I think Deborah had brought that this out when she opened up tonight, everybody is going through something. Everybody is struggling with something. Amen? And so we can offer words of encouragement. Amen? Things that will help people. We can offer those kind of words to people. And, think, you know, just realize, you know, 
When somebody's ugly to you, they are probably going through a struggle. They're probably going through a hard time. And, you know, the only way they know how to act, react to their situation is, is just being hard or just being rude. Amen? We know that's true, don't we? Proverbs 16 and 24, and I think Pastor brought the scripture out. This is the passion. Nothing is more appealing than speaking beautiful, life-giving words, for they release sweetness to our souls and inner healing to our spirit. And then Proverbs 16, 24 in the Amplified Classic says, uh, Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the mind and healing to the body. I love that way that Me says too. that. It's Amen. Pleasant. Sweet to the mind and healing to the body. So love, you know, I love that. I just love the way it says that. You know, pleasant words are sweet to the mind. That means unpleasant words uh-huh. are bitter to the mind. That's good. Sour to the mind. Uh-huh. I mean, unpleasant words. Wow. You know, that really makes you think, doesn't it? How powerful words are. Even to ourselves. When we say unpleasant words, it's bringing bitter bitterness and sourness to our minds. So we don't want that, do we? No, we want sweet. And you know, we need to be free with pleasant words. Be free with kind words, courteous words. And be stingy. Just downright stingy with unpleasant words. Amen. 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 Let's be very, very stingy with those unpleasant words. And speaking pleasant words can actually heal the body. Think about that tonight. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Amen? That's pretty powerful. And you know, I think that um, not just the person you're speaking the pleasant words to brings healing. I think it brings it to us, too, when we speak pleasant words. Amen. Amen. You can, you know, you think about it. You get around somebody that they're just negative, they're rude, they're they're angry, they're ugly, they're spewing uh, mean words or, or just uh, words of anger. You don't, you're not feeling very great by the time you leave that person. But you get around somebody that's encouraging, somebody that is lifting uh, lifting you up, somebody that is speaking positive, uh, good words. Amen. When you leave, you feel, wow, you know, you're, you're standing a little bit taller. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're feeling a sweetness in your mind. Uh-huh, yeah. You're feeling a sweetness in your body. Sure. Amen? Sure. You're feeling that strength coming to you. Uh-huh. Feeling that healing in your body and your mind. So be stingy with those unpleasant words. And I love that, that those uh, pleasant words can actually bring healing to the body. Amen. Amen. And I receive that healing. Amen. Amen. When I get around somebody with pleasant words, I just love it. I soak it in. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we want to bring sweetness to the mind and healing to the body. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. And I just want to say I thank each and every one of y'all for being here tonight. You came out in a hundred degree weather to hear the word of God tonight. Amen. Awesome. And I believe God sees that and he honors it. I believe you're going to receive something extra tonight. We serve an extra God, don't we? Amen. So I believe we're receiving something extra. Praise God. Yes. But you know, we see um, people suffering with anxiety more today because there's so much stress, there's so much pressure. It's just like, you know, there's pressure that is being put on people today. Um, You know, so much going on. Things are moving so fast in the world. So much evil going on in the world. You watch the news just for five or ten minutes and you know you can be brought right down. And that anxiety, you feel that anxiety coming on you. 
And so, you know, we got to get back in the spirit, you know, put on some praise music. You know, get your praise going on, amen. And so, you know, get that spirit of God back in there. True. We got to drive out that anxiety. You know, the enemy comes against all of us with it. You know, he's working overtime right now. He knows his time is short. Yes, he does. He's working overtime, and he's working overtime to try to steal our peace, trying to steal our joy. He knows that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Our strength. Amen. So we want to hold on to our strength. We don't want to. Uh, to uh, be uh, shaken by anything that will steal our joy. You know, we're, I, I didn't bring Jerry Savelle's um, word that he got for this year. But he said, if you won't get your eyes on the things that are going on in the world, right. what the Lord is going to do in the body of Christ, and believe me, it's awesome stuff that God's going to do, but we can't get our eyes over on what's going on in the world. If we do, we're going to go down that flow. Right. And we don't want to go down that flow. We are too close to making it. Amen. Amen. We're too close to heaven right now. Amen. Being delivered. You know, it says when all these things come on the world, uh, earth, look up because your deliverance is near. Amen. Amen. So our deliverance is near tonight. Amen. Praise God. Proverbs 12 and 25 in the Passion says, Anxious fear brings depression, but a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. We want our joy to be full, don't we? We want yeah. overflowing joy in our heart tonight. Praise God. So we've got to work extra hard, don't we? Yeah. We've got to have that extra push to surround ourselves with the presence of God. And, you know... Let encouraging words be on your heart. Let it come out your mouth. You know, we have to practice it, don't we? As pastors talk about, we have to practice being courteous. We have to practice using courteous words. Even when people are ugly, uh, 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 we don't like it, do we? We're all flesh. We were born in the flesh. But we have become a new person, so when that happens, we've got to just put our flesh down. You know, we're dead to our flesh. We are dead to our flesh. Even though our flesh wants to rise up, we have to say no to our feelings, no to our flesh, and yes to the Spirit of God. Amen. How important is encouraging words? Life-giving words of encouragement can restore joy to the heart. That's how powerful. And just an uplifting word to someone can make the difference in their life. Yes. Can make a whole difference. Can change their how they feel. Can change their whole outlook on the, the day. Can, can heal their life. That's me blowing up here, y'all. I've got all this wind. I know Patty's like, what is that noise up there? I've got the fans on me. Thank God for it. <laughs> but it's blowing my microphone and it's making that wind sound. That's not the, the Holy Spirit blowing in here. But that's okay. <laughs> oh, so important. So important. Encouraging words. You know, just uplifting words. To someone can make a change in their life. Totally can change their life. So we want to use encouraging words. We want to use encouraging words so people can be restored. Isn't that awesome? That's good. Yes. Wouldn't that be awesome to be used? That you can speak a word. You know, we're always wanting God to use us. And we want, you know, we think that the, the only thing we recognize is a, is a, a person's leg growing out or something, you know, huge <laughs> like that. But imagine speaking a kind, encouraging word to somebody that will restore their life. Talking about Russ Taft and I, that was such an uh, awesome thing that God is doing in his life. And let me tell you, 
we got to get rid of religion. Amen. You know, religion killed Jesus. It killed Jesus on the cross. Religion is not going to it's not going to change a person's life. It's going to drive them away. It's going to drive them away. So we've got to just get over ourselves. I've got my likes and my dislikes. We all do. But what the Word says, do not judge. Because if you judge, you will be judged. You know, we think, we see a, 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 a beam in somebody's eye, <laughs> you know, as, as the Word says. We see something in somebody else's life. And we think, oh, they're just, they're just pitiful. They are just horrible. They are terrible. I don't have that in my life. There's that pride thing. Where were you at one time before grace came into your life? Amen? We all need that grace, all of us. So let's just forget about religion, and let's remember Jesus. And let's share Jesus. You know, Jesus is love, isn't he? Yes. He is love. And that's all we can do is share yes. who Jesus is. And if we share anything else, we're sharing religion. That's just the bottom line. So, making a difference. So powerful. Encouraging words can do wonders. That's what that scripture said. It can do wonders. Sounds like encouraging words can do miracles. Amen. So let's remember that. Amen. Let's just remember that. How powerful encouraging words are. We just don't realize it. And let's practice that. Amen. Let's practice that in the church. You know, sometimes we take each other for granted, don't we? And you know, we don't know what somebody's going through, even in this body right here. We don't know. And an encouraging word, having an encouraging attitude can help that person. It can deliver them. It could restore them. It could heal them, break through some chains in their life. And as pastor was talking about, starting your home. We take our, our husbands and wives and our children and, you know, our family, we take them for granted. But we're going to change that. Amen. We're going to change that. Amen. And I'm going to end with this scripture. And I think Pastor brought this out too. Ephesians 4 29 in the Passion says, And never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. I have too many times. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace. 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 Amen. By speaking words of grace to them. Amen. Amen. So let's strive for and let's practice. Amen. Letting our words be beautiful gifts. Amen. And we're going to start by being courteous to our in our home, in our church. Remember, everywhere we go, practice being courteous. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise tonight. Lord God, he's taken us, you might think, well, this is a very simple word. He's taken us to a higher level. Amen. If we can't start start with the simple, how are we going to do the big? Amen. Amen. So that was a powerful word. Yes. Yes. Even though in our thinking, we might think it's simple. But it's more powerful than we recognize. Amen. 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 Deborah, you can come up. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know that you enjoyed tonight's message. I know that we are all going to speak kind words. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to help us do that because we can't do it without Him. <laughs> We're going to get ourselves out of the way. Got some, got some good meat there from you pastors tonight. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I do want to remind you that we are having a fellowship uh, social. It will be this Sunday, and it is a potato so social. Natasha and Chrissy are providing the potatoes. We have to uh, supply the toppings. So anything that you want to bring to put on the potatoes, just bring them on Sunday. There is a menu in the back so you can check to see who brought what. And um, also we're having a white elephant game. So 
Dust off some of those things that you have in the back corners of your house that you're not using. Put them in a bag and bring them, and we're going to have some fun and fellowship. Being courteous one to another. <laughs> Sometimes those games, I'm just going to admit it, Facebook, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes things can get tempted. But anyway, glory to God. So we hope you will join us. We hope you'll be back here Sunday morning at 1030 to begin with praise and worship. And we just thank you for joining us tonight. Let's finish out prayer. Father God, your word is truth. Your word is life. Your word, Father God, changes us. And we just thank you so much, Father God. We thank you that you loved us so much that you don't leave us like we are. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do strengthen us, that you do give us that conviction of our words. And just help us to control what we say and the way that we act among one another so that we can be the arms and feet and hands and the words of encouragement of our Father God and honor him and, and just do all the things that we should be doing. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for bringing us together. Keep us safe this week, Father God. Thank you for the healings, the prosperity, all of the changes that you're making in us, transforming us. And we just thank you, Father God, for every opportunity to shine for you. We give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen.